congregation rise. Merciful Father, we come before your throne this morning with hearts that are heavy. And we'd ask that you would that you would come. We ask that each heart here would be touched by you today. That you would comfort each heart, that you'd speak to each heart, that Father, that we would know the reality of your resurrection power. As we think of your son Elijah. And the truth that he's with you right now, we pray 
that this time together would be a celebration of your gift to us of Elijah. And that, Lord, you would give strength where strength is needed, encouragement where it's needed, Lord. But more than anything, that Jesus would be lifted up. That the reality that he defeated death and is seated at your right hand would be real to each of us and that Elijah is there with you. So once again, Father, we just ask you, come. And we pray all these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Please be seated. I'm Pastor Chris Kumpala, and I want to welcome each and every one of you to Zion Free Lutheran Church today on behalf of our church family, on behalf of the Finstrom family as well. And uh, just uh, thankful that many of you have been able to make it despite the roads still being uh, a little bit difficult out there today. I know that it means a lot for the family for you to be here with them today. There has been such an outpouring of support for Dave and Tiffany and Ezekiel and Isabel and the whole family, and that is so much appreciated by them and the many things that have been shared. I um, want to remind you that there is um, a sharing box in the back to share your memories of Elijah. And uh, if, if you grab those cards and you fill some out, I know that's going to be so so much of a blessing to the family to continue to do that. And if you happen to forget, don't feel bad reaching out and Facebooking the family. Um, they, <laughs> you know, you would think that we would have kind of ferreted out all the Elijah stories, but it seems that we're far from it. And, uh, and nonetheless, we want to be thorough. And so if you'd participate in that thorough search, uh, please do so. The family has requested that we recognize uh, just a number of people important to Elijah's life and important in this situation. And I want to recognize Elijah's freshman classmates. If you were one of Elijah's classmates, would you please stand and be recognized this morning? And also, if you're from Powers Lake and you're on, ta on staff or you are a teacher at Powers Lake, would you stand as well? There you are. <laughs> we were looking for you Friday night. Thank you for, for coming today. and Thank you for being here. Uh, you may be seated. Also want to thank uh, the uh, uh, Tioga Fire and Emergency Services as well as the Montreal County Law Enforcement and the North Dakota State Patrol. And if you are working with any of them, would you stand as well to be recognized this morning by the family? And doubtless, they, they're having a busy morning, I'm sure, aren't they, Marissa? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure of it. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for being here. I also want to draw attention to uh, these stickers, the origin of which I'm not certain of, but they're good quality, and they got a good likeness of Elijah, and it's got his verse that we'll be reading, uh, 1 John 1, 9, be strong, be brave, be fearless. You are never alone uh, on the top of the sticker. So those are on the back table. Please take that um, as you would. With that, um, as we get going this morning, uh, readers, you hopefully have a service order in front of you, and we'll have you come forward one each at a time, and uh, the, reading is, the readings are on the pulpit for you as you come up. And thank you for sharing scripture for Elijah's family today. I'm going to pray just for, I'm going to pray one more time. Heavenly Father, I just pray that every, every scripture that is shared today, Lord, that it would indeed be a special balm and healing and comfort for us today. Lord, bless those that are part of this service, and Lord, bless the Finstrom family through this time. Lord, be with them. Let this be a special time of your ministry to them. Pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Kaylee. Kaylee Nelson. Psalm 91, 1 through 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God proves true. 
He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Let's sing together in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, but with the precious blood of Christ.
Joshua 1.9 Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. James 4.13-15 says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and try to make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Elijah David Stanley Finstrom went home to be with the Lord suddenly in a motor vehicle accident on Wednesday, March 1, 2023, at the age of 14. Elijah was born on March 30, 2008, in Fargo, North Dakota, son of David and Tiffany Rice Finstrom. He was baptized at Beaver Creek Free Lutheran Church in Ray, North Dakota, by his grandfather, Pastor Dale Finstrom, Papa Dale and confirmed at Zion Free Lutheran Church in Tioga, North Dakota. Elijah attended Powers Lake School since sixth grade. He actively participated in football, having fun, regular attendance at the principal's office, and served as freshman class president. He made it his life mission to, to, smile, to put a smile on everyone's face, and he did his best to make them laugh. He also joyfully worked at Senex and Powers Lake, and liked helping his great-grandma Rice on the farm, until the lawnmowers came out. While not at school or work, Elijah enjoyed playing video games with his cousins and friends. He was well known for his great sense of humor, making people laugh, and easily connecting with people of all ages to make them feel important. Together with his family, Elijah enjoyed outdoor adventures like four-wheeling, gopher hunting, snowmobiling, fishing, kayaking, airsoft wars, and trips to Yogi Bear Campground. He had an entrepreneurial spirit as evidenced by his ability to flip Jolly Ranchers and Milk Duds for a profit from the store walls of his locker. As part of the Finstrom family, Elijah played many roles. To his mother, he was her muscles, from hauling, gro hauling groceries to furniture rearranging and where he got his charming good looks. To his dad, he was a board game opponent, along with where he got his hard work ethic and humorous personality. To Isabel, he was a big brother who helped with homework, enjoyed epic dance parties, and affectionately annoyed her. They also joined forces in teasing their mom about them being taller than her. To Ezekiel, he was a big brother, best friend, and someone who always brought an atmosphere of joking and laughter. Together, the siblings bonded over video games, Monopoly, and funny cat videos. The Lord also played a foundational role in Elijah's life. His natural ability to love those around him reflected Christ in him. Elijah's friends were very important to him. He was known for making everyone's day better, inventing new words, new vocabulary like thematically, being an epic content creator, bringing his own barbecue sauce, and being obsessed with eating Takis, knowing everyone and singing BK, have it your way, you rule. He truly had a zest for life and thought his friends were bussin'. No mega bussin'. Elijah is survived by his parents, David and Tiffany Rice Finstrom, sister Isabel, 12, brother Ezekiel, 10, grandparents Dave and Chris Finstrom of Glendon, Minnesota. Brian and Nancy Rice of White Earth, North Dakota, Karen and Robert Pennings of Warrens, Wisconsin, 
great-grandparents, Artis Rice of Tioga, North Dakota, Gerald Copes of Tioga, North Dakota, Donna and Leo Holm of Balsam Lake, Wisconsin, aunts, uncles, and cousins, Matt, Amy Finstrom, and their children, Mackenzie and Michaela, Laura Lee Finstrom, Jeremy, Amber Rice, and their children, Caleb, Caden, Carson, and Camden, Bethany, Daniel, Letch, and their children, Cameron, Cabela, Hannah, and Hunter, Carrie Eater, Benjamin Eater, Gracia Eater, Greta, Merrill, Laura, Candace Pennings, Daniel, Zam, Pennings, James, Eve, Pennings, along with numerous other dear relatives. He was preceded in death by great-grandparents, Stanley and Arlene Carlson of Roseau, Minnesota, Melvin and Lorraine Finstrom of Buxton, North Dakota, Jerome Rice of Tioga, North Dakota, John Nelson of Balsam Lake, Wisconsin, Evelyn Copes of Tioga, North Dakota, and Hazel Johnson of Fridley, Minnesota. The Finstrom family would like to extend their gratitude to all the people, both near and far, who have supported them more than they could ask or imagine during this difficult time. Thank you for your prayers, meals, hugs, quality time, sharing memories, and countless other acts of service.
righteous man perishes, and no one lays it to heart. Devote men are taken away, while no one understands. For the righteous man is taken away from calamity. He enters into peace, they rest in their beds, who walk in their uprightness. John eleven twenty five through 27 Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Daniel was unable to make it to the service today and did his best to get a recording and appreciate that very much. He's the music teacher at Powers Lake. You got a good music teacher out there, don't you? <laughs> Thank you for that, Haniel. As we come today to God's Word, we come to Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. I'm going to read this text for you. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. We read in Jesus' name. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table. He will come and serve them if he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake. Blessed are those servants but know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Heavenly Father, these are your words. I pray that it would be your word that ministers to our hearts, because, Lord, your word has great power, and, Lord, it brings great comfort and, Lord, it indeed can bring life itself. And so, Lord, I pray that your word would be ministering to hearts this morning. For your word alone is everlasting truth from cover to cover. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. It may not be much of a surprise that there was a lot of preparation uh, in getting things together for today. Uh, and actually, it was a lot of getting things together for yesterday, but the weather had other things in mind, and... Elijah's fondness for uh, snow days has been well observed, and we all got to share in that together. We think about being ready for the snow in the winter, and we think about unchanged plans, and Abraham Lincoln, in the third year of the Civil War, he said, I claim not to have controlled events, but confess plainly that events have controlled me. I'm apologizing for a lot of terrible things that had happened as part of that. Plans change, don't they? Many of you arranged your week around coming yesterday, <laughs> and then you had to rearrange them again because of the weather to come today because plans change. And very quickly, we're working through digging ourselves out of snow. I don't, I don't know about where you're at for the day, but this is, uh, this is clothing change number three for me today. It began with the parka and the boots going out and shoveling the driveway, and then it was the service this morning, and now the, the funeral for Elijah and for his family this morning. Plans change, and as we're met with that reality, it smashes our sense of control, doesn't it? No doubt today we, we're, we're challenged in that, that sense in which we have control over our own destiny and our own life. And, and Jesus, as he teaches here, he makes it clear that that we have less than total control in our life. And he says to expect a visitor that will return, to live expectantly as though a master has gone away and, and will come back. He says, stay dressed for action, be like men who are waiting, so they may open the door to him at once, as good, as good servants no doubt would. And said, he said then, blessed are the, those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Blessed are those who are awake, those who are not asleep in the midst of their life, 
but awake to the reality that a day comes when the master returns to the door and the door opens and our time in this earth comes to an end. A word like ready doesn't really need definition, does it? But it's helpful to remember that ready means to be equipped or completed for an occasion or purpose. For these servants to be ready and awake and planned means that they had to anticipate something specific occurring in their life. We all expect certain things to take place. And whatever plans we had for this Sunday, this was not one of those plans, was it? This certainly wasn't Elijah's plan for the 12th of March, 2023. Certainly not the families, and indeed for none of us. And so as Jesus teaches us about readiness, it is about anticipation of a particular event. And yet we know these events change. So how is it that we can be ready? These servants, as they're left behind, they're left to wait, to wait for the anticipated event as the master goes away to the wedding. And when the master goes away to the wedding feast, this would have been a multi-day affair. He would have been gone. He would have been roaming as part of a multi-day affair for this wedding, and maybe he would have come back on day three or day four or day five or day six, maybe at day, maybe at night. You don't know. And for those of you who have an employer that's coming in to check on you and you know that he's coming sometime in the course of the day, You don't know if it's going to be at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or maybe be close to closing time after 4. Makes no difference. You wait ready. Ready. And so too, we wait for an anticipated event. These men were waiting for their master while he was waiting to come home for the wedding feast, and he says, then you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. I don't know if Elijah was expecting to meet Jesus quite so soon. Probably wasn't. And as long, for as long as we live, I think the picking the minute or the hour that we finally get to meet Jesus I don't think we get to pick that time because it's the master who ultimately comes home. Elijah didn't get to pick his time, but the master came. (laughs) And so whether you know it or not, when your doorbell is quiet, there are unexpected visitors on their way. And it may be the, the thief in the night that the The servants are on the lookout for protecting the master's property. Maybe the master himself. Jesus challenges his disciples and challenges us to be ready and waiting. And my question for us today is, what are you waiting for? (laughs) What are you waiting for? There are a great many things that Elijah was waiting for in his life. He was waiting for prom and all the wonderful pranking that was doubtless going to be part of that. And who knows how much money he would have made with this black market, Jolly Ranchers, Milk Duds, and who knows whatever else the principal's going to find out he was dealing as the days go on. There might be a good nest egg for Dave and Tiffany indeed, with all of the entrepreneurship maybe getting away in in the way of learning a little bit along the way, but... There were good things for Elijah to anticipate. There are good things that we in our life anticipate, things that we're waiting for expectantly and that we are excited for. And those of you that are looking forward to prom this year, no doubt there'll be a special significance for you as you make it to that day and have that enjoyment and that celebration. Maybe you're waiting for the day that your team does well and is able to bring home a trophy. Maybe you're waiting for the day that you're just able to finish school and get out of home life. Maybe you're looking forward to the day when you meet the love of your life and you get to to, to marry that person. But none of these events are guaranteed. As much as we wait expectantly, enjoy for those things. Not one of them is guaranteed. 
If you're waiting for those things, if you're waiting for those things for fulfillment, if you're, you're, you're waiting indiscriminately without anything out there in the viewpoint, know the time comes. The master knocks. And when the master knocks and we're left reaching out, looking to what we're expecting, we're, we're left to looking for our why, the purpose in life, right? Why? Because if the event that we expect is an event that can be canceled and postponed and rescheduled, then is that really the thing that we can expect with a true hope that isn't shaken by tragedy, by death, by disappointment, by loss? The why of our life, if it is based on some event not promised to us, we'll find the purpose of our life shaken. And so it should be. Because the only why that we can count on is the why of the return of the master. Your why better last a lifetime. Your why better last a lifetime because the things that you expect and anticipate in life may not come. God alone numbers our days. He alone chooses when it is that he will visit. He alone chooses when he will return and inaugurate all the promises that are his. James 4.13, we heard this morning. And it says, come now, you who say in such and such a day, I'm gonna go and take some jolly ranchers, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna make some profit, right? And Elijah, maybe that was his heart, right? To take some milk duds. In such and such a day, I'm gonna take some milk duds, I'm gonna turn a profit, and be rolling in the dough before prom, as no doubt would have been the case. We heard some things about profit margins on Friday, if you missed it. (laughs) And yet, such a thing cannot be counted upon. Entrepreneur that Elijah was, entrepreneurs that we are in planning our life out, and the profit and the happiness and the blessing that we seek that isn't promised to us, But James writes, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you're a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. If the Lord wills. Now, that word Lord is kind of a, it's a church word, isn't it? We don't typically throw that around, you know. Unless, uh, unless that's something that uh, we use for some of the land barons and baronesses around, right? Lord, you know. Uh, <laughs> master. Master, that's what the word means. If the master wills. Every promise, every hope, every expectant thing in life, ultimately, whether we acknowledge it or not, is out of our hands and ultimately in the hands of our master. And rather than deny that fact and and, and be surprised in the most awful of ways that those things can be pried from our fingers, those things that we felt we deserved or should be guaranteed to us, instead of being surprised by that, to rather rest in saying, God, let your will be done. If your will be done, (laughs) I'll make a fortune in milk duds. If your will be done, Seeking the Lord's will be done as a good servant waiting. You today are waiting. You're probably waiting for me to finish. Maybe you're waiting to go back and do the shoveling you're so excited to do at home. (laughs) I know a lot of you are just really eager for that. My question is, what are you waiting for? I mean, honestly and truly, what is it that you're waiting for? If what you're waiting for isn't the deepest, most unchangeable why, is it something you can count on for tomorrow? Now, you may not know that answer, but I'm telling you the answer. And the answer is, nah, nope, you can't. (laughs) But for those who wait in Jesus, those who know that the master is coming and they wait in readiness for his return, now they... They are waiting.
Are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus to come? People who are ready, people who are ready, the servants, is, as they're waiting there, they know who to expect. And that person is Jesus. When the time comes for each and every one, one of us, we will all face Jesus. And the only difference will be whether we face Jesus as a righteous judge or as we find him as the hand, at the hand of the benevolent father. Those who are ready know who to expect at the door. And they're waiting. They know their why. They know their purpose as those that are trusted with the master's house, waiting. Waiting for the master's return. And though they don't know when it is that that door will open, they acknowledge that whenever the master chooses to come home and open that door, that it's the master's choosing and be at peace with his timing. That's easy to do until the knock comes. People who are ready, they know who to expect, they know their why, and they know that they're waiting. They know that they're waiting. Jesus came, and then he left. But he has not left us alone. He has sent his Holy Spirit to those who place their trust in him. So that in our waiting, it's not a matter of sitting still. But that in our waiting, there is a fullness of purpose in life. On Friday, in sharing, one of the things I said is that happiness is fleeting. (laughs) True joy is for eternity. The things that bring you happiness one day may falter and fail. They may expire. They may be taken away from you. But the things of God, when our life is placed in the grip of Christ, in his nail-pierced hand, it's a grip that doesn't relent. And it's a joy that never fails. I think Elijah, I think Elijah was ready. And I think it's, Part of that readiness that gives a deep, resounding, overflowing joy in the life of a believer. To be brimming in the life of Christ ought to make us loud and sometimes obnoxious people, dear brother and sister in Christ. (laughs) Elijah was brimming in joy. And for us today, in the face of loss, to be able to find joy indeed signals that we've found life's deepest why. And we've found what it is to expect. We've found what it is that will never be rescheduled, what it is that will never be postponed, what it is that will never be canceled. It's the return of Jesus. Jesus, as he teaches these disciples, he he speaks to them about waiting expectantly, and there's a word that he uses that doubtless echoes back to this time in the Christian calendar when we observe a Lent and, and Passover coming into the week of Jesus' crucifixion, Passover. And how this worked was the Israelites, they're in Egypt, and, and they're, they're getting ready to be rescued. Moses is getting them ready, and, and they gather around the table, and they hear scripture. <laughs> and they wait for God. And as they wait, do you know how it is that it says in, in Exodus chapter 12, 11, how it is that they're supposed to wait? It says in Exodus 12, 11, in this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. In other words, when Jesus is teaching his disciples about readiness and waiting, he's mirroring the Passover feast. And today, if we were eating the Passover feast, you know how we would do it? (laughs) We would have kept today's first outfit. We would have sat down at the table Snow boots on, parka zipped up with a snow shovel. (laughs) 
That's how the Israelites were to eat at the Passover, ready at a moment's notice to go. Because sure enough, God came and the people were set free and they left in a great hurry. Passover was observed and set up this way so that every time we would observe waiting for God's rescue, we would be ready to be taken away at a moment's notice, dressed and ready to the task. And I would encourage now every single person in this room, there's probably only two or three of you that have a dumb phone, okay? (laughs) I'm going to encourage you, I'm going to give you homework. Pastors sometimes do that, you know. (laughs) I'm going to give you homework between now and Easter. I want you between now and Easter to wear your boots and your parka and pick up your snow shovel, and I want you to sit at your dinner table. And I want you to take a picture of your family waiting at the dinner table, ready. And I want you to send that to this family. And I want them to be encouraged to know that they're surrounded by families that are ready for whatever it is that comes. Because I know this family and I love them dearly, we all do. And they're a family who's concerned for being ready. I pray that's your heart too. And I pray that we'd all be there every day, not taking a single day for granted, that we'd be sitting there in our boots and our parkas with our our snow shovel. And and though the people around us look at us kind of funny, (laughs) that when the Lord returns and we're rescued in an instant, that we'd each be ready to go. Jesus is the one who has made the only way to escape because whether it was this march or it was a march 70 years from now, Elijah was going to face his creator, his maker, and his savior. And so then as Christians, we get to do something that is strange to the world indeed. We are grieving the horrible loss of this special boy and rejoicing because we know what to expect. Not just a cross, but an empty tomb and a resurrection that we all get to share in. Be ready. Be ready and put your hope in the things that don't get rescheduled. Make your why the greatest purpose that echoes for eternity with Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the rescuer. Lord, that you have made a way. And Lord, that we'd be ready. Oh, that we'd be ready. Lord, tragedy comes, loss comes. And our time on this this earth, long though it might seem to us sometimes, Lord, how quickly it vanishes. Lord, I I pray that each heart today would be resolved to be ready. Lord, to put their life in the hands of the master, to wait anticipating his return as a servant and knowing that in Christ there is the promise of eternal life, that that would be what we'd expect and that we'd be ready for your return whenever it may come. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to invite all of you to uh, immediately following the service. There's going to be a meal across the road at the Tioga Community Center. There are going to be um, law enforcement directing traffic if you were going to drive over there. but you're welcome to join um, everyone here um, for a free meal over at the Tioga Community Center. With that in mind, would you um, bow with me for a word of prayer? Father, we're so thankful for your love, so thankful for your word today and the truth of the resurrection, the reality of it. I'm looking forward to that day when we sit around your table, Lord, at the wedding feast of the Lamb with Elijah. 
So thankful for all of the loving hands that have prepared a meal for all of us today, Lord. We pray you'd bless them. And bless us as we fellowship together and celebrate the memory of Elijah and look forward to that day we see him again. And Lord, hear us as we pray together the prayer that you taught us, Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you go, go with his blessing from Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Would you stand as we sing? Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning.
my Savior.